Hey bookworms, welcome back to my channel and to another retro review where I review classic literature. Now, before I continue to the actual video, I want all of you to be prepared for next month, which is Halloween month. Like last year, I'm going to do a review on a horror novel every single week of October, and they're going to be on Saturdays instead of Fridays, so I'll be able to fit five books instead of four. And this year's theme is suitable for this review as well, because I'll be reviewing classic 19th century horror novels. But if you can't wait until October, I already reviewed Dracula, so go check it out. I will also link it down below in the description box. Now, speaking of classic reviews, I did Austen, I did Dickens, now it's time for Jules Verne. He was a French author who lived in the 19th century and wrote science fiction novels about inventions so progressive, some of them were actually made thanks to his novels. Or so people think. We tend to be somewhat pragmatic and romanticize the past. You know, it's a shame I didn't talk about it in my video about popular book misconceptions, but Verne didn't actually invent the submarine. They actually existed long before this novel, but he definitely inspired what we know today as the submarine. You know what? I think I should do a part two of book misconceptions. What do you think? Let me know. But back to the novel. It takes place in the mid 19th century and its protagonist is Dr. Pierre Aronnax, a naturalist, probably most closely to what we call today a biologist, with a vast knowledge and interest in different marine animals. Now, at the time, the world is terrified by sightings of a mysterious sea creature, some sort of an undiscovered narwhal who damages ships in all seven seas. And Dr. Aranex is obviously very intrigued by this, and he joins the voyage to seek and hopefully catch and catalog this mysterious sea monster. But what he actually finds is so different and in a way so much better than what he expected. As their ship is attacked, the, he and other two survivors, his stoic manservant Conseil and a hot-blooded Canadian harpooner called Ned Land, find themselves in a submarine, a vehicle that can travel under the sea. With its mysterious inventor, Captain Nemo, the group joins the submarine, the Nautilus, in adventures all across the ocean. Now, before I get to do my opinion on this book, I have another interesting misconception, one that I only recently discovered. Most people think that the measurement 20,000 leagues refers to the depth, but in fact, it's the length of the journey that the group makes in the Nautilus, because 20,000 leagues depth is way deeper than any measured part of the ocean. So just for info, I thought it was a pretty cool piece of information. Okay, so it kind of sounds like I'm procrastinating with giving you my actual review and opinion, and maybe I am because the truth is that I enjoyed this book a lot less than what I was hoping for, which is weird because I first read it many years ago as a kid and I remember really liking it. But I have a feeling I skipped parts that I didn't like and just jumped into the more interesting bits. I used to do it sometimes as a kid. So here are my issues. First, the book is kind of constructed like a bunch of short stories. And if you know me, you know that I have this really weird aversion to short stories. I don't know why, but anything other than one cohesive narrative, just I don't like them. Now this one is on me. I know I'm weird, but you know, it didn't help. This book is an adventure book and it's constructed in a way of they reach a certain place, do a thing there, move on. They reach another place, they're in trouble there, they find a solution and then continue, etc. And it's also rather of the time. I don't know if French literature at the time was similar to English literature, but in the 19th century, you usually had your main character and their main goal, but Along the way, you had many small vignettes sprinkled in the narrative, so I suppose this point is more informative for you to understand how the book is constructed and, well, you know, we all have these weird little things that bother us specifically and this is one of them for me. But the second thing that I found less enjoyable was the fact that the book is incredibly technical. So you know how in the 19th century they had the thing about describing the scene 
to the tiniest of detail. I remember this one bit in The Woman in White where someone come to breakfast and he describes exactly what every other character wore and ate to great detail. And let's not forget that one bit in the picture of Dorian Gray where in the length of a few good pages, Oscar Wilde just describes Gray's stone collection. And if you didn't know that about Victorian literature, now you do, but please don't let it deter you from reading novels of those times. They were wonderful. And for my recollection, Charles Dickens does it less than others. So let me know if I'm wrong, write it down. Anyway, it really seemed like this book was more of a presentation than a novel. Considering a submarine like the Nautilus didn't really exist at the time of writing the book, it would make sense that Verne would like to describe it to the reader. But the details in which he portrays this machine, including the number of people who would fit in it, the power of the engine, and how exactly they work, and such things, the only second to Tolkien. I mean, again, I get the need for description, but at times it felt like I was reading a technical handbook instead of a novel. And the same goes to the scenery, which is exotic and all. But the descriptions felt so cold and technical as opposed to organic to the plot. So no doubt this book is wonderful, literally. It's full of wonder. Exotic places, strange creatures, magnificent machine unseen until now. But for some reason, as a kid, I liked it better. Maybe if it was constructed differently, I would have enjoyed it more. But it felt, despite all the magnificent wonder, a little too cold and technical. Like the Nautilus itself. Fantastic, but a dead machine. That is, however, not to say I didn't like it at all. But like many classic we know so well from popular culture, it turned out differently than what I expected or remembered. And that was my review on 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and I really hope I didn't disappoint you. Whenever you read an old book, you need to remind yourself that we are all victims of our times in a way. I can't blame a book for being written in a style different than a modern one. However, just because something is famous and considered a classic doesn't mean I have to love it and gush about it. So let me know in the comment section below if you have any classic beloved book that everyone loves and raves about, but was simply not for you. So guys, thank you very much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it. And if you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to stay tuned for October. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.